The Watership Down podcast is intended for listeners who are familiar with the plot. There may be spoilers. This episode is recorded, scripted, narrated and edited by Newell Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 92 in which I will be reviewing the Australian Broadcasting Corporation 1984 radio play of Watership Down in full. This follows my conversation last week with Sean Hagens, who introduced me to this little-known production. I also need to point out that although Sean comes from Canada, he now lives in the US. One more bit of borough keeping. There is a new documentary on Warship Down on YouTube. It is well worth a watch. It is called Warship Down and Richard Adams Documentary. The channel name is Stuart Robinson. That's S-T-U-A-R-T, Stuart Robinson. The URL will be in the notes. So then, on with the review. Review of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation 1984 radio play of Watership Down. As I said in my conversation with Sean Hagins last week, this radio play is almost completely rescripted from the book. Yet, despite that, it follows the plot of the book far more closely than any other portrayal of the original novel I have come across. It is also a version almost completely uninfluenced by the 1978 film that was released six years earlier, though with occasional exceptions, such as the example Sean pointed out of Hazel leaping onto the punt on the test after chewing through the rope, rather than doing so while already on the punt. There is hardly any use of lapine in the play. For example, the Owsler is referred to by such terms as the guards. At the beginning of the play, there is mention of outskirters, such as Hazel and Fiverr, not even having burrows, which differs from the novel. After Fiverr has his vision of fields covered with blood, they go to see the Chief Rabbit and meet Sergeant Silver first, for in this play, Captain is not the only rank an Owlslaw officer can have. After a conversation with him, they have a long conversation with Captain Bigwig about the Threara. Bigwig sounds like a gruff older officer, as we said last week, perhaps he sounds a bit too old to be an effective fighter. The initially named rabbits who leave Sandalford are Hazel, Fiverr, Dandelion, Pitkin, Buckthorn, Hawkbit, Silver and Bigwig. That's eight rabbits, but Hazel later says there are eleven of them. Notably, there seems to be no Blackberry. Thank you to Javier Ramos for highlighting this. And then Major, rather than Captain Holly, tries to arrest them. And, as in the 1978 film, it is all of them, rather than just the two Owlslaw officers as in the book. It is during the ensuing fight that we experience this play's original contribution to the portrayal of rabbit-on-rabbit violence, the use of genuine rabbit squeals in the background during the violence. To me, it really doesn't work. I even prefer John Bennett's slightly restrained rawr in the 1978 film. Nevertheless, it was innovative and worth a try. As the escapees make their way through the night, the sounds of nature in the background may be more Australian so as to sound familiar, as we discussed last week. This is the case throughout the play. Entering the woods is not referred to with as much importance as in the book. This is the only recorded performance of Watership Down in which the blessing of El Ra is told at the same place as in the book. The story is dramatised rather than just told. At the end of the story, I think it is Pipkin who wonders if there is anything in the world that is, that is afraid of them. Fiverr has a dream about the kind of high place they are looking for before they get to the river. He says in advance they will have to cross water, and their close encounter with the dog also happens before they reach it, after which they reach the stream. The dog then returns. Dandelion and Hazel find the piece of wood, but only Pipkin needs it. The crossing is dealt with more in passing. Similarly, the crow attacks Pipkin only at the beanfield, who is described as going tharn. Fiverr is less vulnerable in this version. They journey to the road at night. Far more is made of the road, and Fiverr takes the lead in crossing it rather than Bigwig. In doing so, he is nearly run over by a crudidu. Bigwig is the most reluctant to cross. The heath that they reach, then, is described as peat country and mostly swamp. Again, a possible Australian influence? Then they come to a stone wall and an abandoned church. This is the first significant change from the book, and may also be influenced by the film. Fiverr has his fog vision there, in which he has a premonition of an obstacle they will need to get through before reaching their destination. The rain comes and goes before they meet Cowslip, who is in their path. They haven't stopped. Then the rain starts again. Hazel agrees with Fiverr about Cowslip not seeming right. Cowslip calls Hazel Ra first, but Hazel says their Ra hasn't been elected yet. 
Once in Cowslip's Warren, there is a long discussion about the Great Burrow. The narrator mentions the lack of kittens, meaning there must be a problem here, rather than the conversation between the rabbits being the means by which we learn this. This narration style, in place of conversation, helps to move the action on at times and is effective. Cowslip, who is a lot more tightly wrapped than in the novel, actually encourages Dandelion to tell the story of the King's Lettuce. The story is dramatised and, in its telling, Prince Rainbow is introduced. Cowslip's Warren is under a graveyard, unlike in the book, where Fiverr just has a vision of the roof of the Great Burrow being made of bones. Here, the bones are actually there. Strawberry, in what must be his first dramatic portrayal, tells them he has heard of a down called Watership Down. I discussed the naming of Watership Down by the rabbits with Sean last week. Strawberry also tries to warn them of the danger, unlike in the book, where he needs more redemption. Bigwig being caught in the snare is dealt with a lot more casually than in the book, with more use of rabbit squeals, and after he survives, the election of Rahazel as Ra takes place. Bigwig acknowledges his leadership straight away. The journey from the Warren of the Snares to Watership Down is mentioned in passing, as is the arrival of Holly and Bluebell. As in the film, they are met before the group have climbed the down. This is the first dramatic portrayal of Bluebell. He is portrayed as having observed the destruction of Sandalford from outside rather than Major, Major Holly. They find holes ready dug at the top of Warship Down. Was this influenced by the 1978 film? The holes need repairing and extending, so the issue of Bucks having to dig is portrayed dramatically for the first time. The rescue of the mouse by Hazel is included, including a reference to a mouse god and them being heathens. The mouse is well portrayed, with an Italian accent not overdone. The mouse uses the phrase by Jiminy for some reason. The story of the trial of Ella Herrera is told, Holly's trauma having already been covered. Again, there is a mixture of narration and acting. There is reference to there being 14 rabbits on Watership Down, as the original 11 have been joined by Strawberry, Bluebell and Holly. The doe problem is mentioned, rapidly followed by the arrival of Kihar, discovered by Bigwig and Silver. Kihar's accent is very mild compared to the film, and Hazel and Fiverr accompany him back to the Warren. The building of Kihar's nest in the Warren is detailed. There is nearly mutiny over feeding Kihar, then Hazel explains why they are doing it. The rabbits are described as fossicking for Kihar's food, an Australian term meaning to rummage or forage. Kihar then flies for them and finds the hut rabbits at Nuthanger as well as Ephrafa. For some reason, the Iron Road is especially emphasised, with Kihar warning them about it. Fiverr's vision before the raid on Nuthanger Farm is of a sick and dying bird who is meant to be Hazel. Hazel has a go at him and says he makes up dreams. The Nuthanger Farm raid is true to the book except that no bucks leave. Holly's party arrive back from Ephrafa in the wake of Hazel being shot, as in the book. Fiverr's dream about Hazel is then true to the book, though no bloody owl is mentioned, just a culvert. There is the attempted election of a new Ra, under the assumption that Hazel is dead. Holly is asked, but says no. Holly then goes through what happened on their expedition. They are warned off by a hare on the way. It had an overtly Australian accent, just about the only character who does in the play. Then the FF run patrol finds them, led by Captain Campion. He explains about Marks. He is one of what is called the Neck Mark Guards. Marks are also called squads. There is a darkly comic scene where a sentry insists on inspecting Campion's mark and Campion has a go at him, but says he would have been in trouble if he hadn't. They meet the council and General Woundwort and see Blackavar after being mutilated. The voice of Woundwort is very thin compared to other portrayals. It works well due to its mean and officious sounding nature. Holly's party tell them they come from Watership Down. Woundwort admits Ephrafa is overcrowded, but the party are not leaving as they know Ephrafa's secrets. While in their new burrow, they all overhear Heisenlay reciting her poetry and talk to her. She is desperate to get rescued from Ephrafa. This is the first example of a, of a portrayal of Warship Down altering a character's name. Holly promises to try to get her and her friends rescued if they manage to get away. His companions criticise him, him for this. Holly gets the idea of how little Ephraf and Rabbits know each other from something Woundwort said. This is what gives him the idea for the trick that will help them escape. They are pursued over the Iron Road by Campion, which differs from the book, and get away because of the train, which Holly does not call a messenger from Frith. Fiverr and Pipkin are still on their way to Nuthanger, and they find Hazel. Pipkin gets help, and Silver helps to get Hazel out. 
In this play, at times, Silver almost seems to act in place of Blackberry. The former hutch does, Clover and Haystack, nurse Hazel back to health in a scrape under some nearby briars. This is a real expansion of their role from the book, especially Haystack, who almost disappears from sight once on the down in the novel. Hazel has a vision of Elachra Ra while ill, and saw his glittering ears. Oddly enough, the bird song used at this point is an authentic British downburn sound. They realise they still do not have enough does, and those they do are former hutch does. Hazel announces they are going back to Ephrafa. He arrives back on the down. Hazel starts to lay out his plan, which we do not hear. It seems it is shared with everyone in this version. Is this wise? The party set off for Ephrafa. Hilariously, Bigwig has to explain to Pipkin why they need does, a rabbit needing sex education. After reaching the river, Hazel details what Bigwig must do. The telling of the tale of Elahra and the Black Rabbit of Inlay is mentioned, but we do not actually hear it. Kiha finds the punt on the river nearby and basically gives them the idea. Then they see a fox. Bigwig then heads for Ephrafa. They hear a rabbit being killed by the fox and find the body. It is an Ephrafan, not Bigwig. In Ephrafa, Woundwart meets the captured Bigwig. We hear this narrated from Bigwig's perspective, unlike in the book. Bigwig is marked by teeth rather than claws. He nearly gets caught out when he shows knowledge of the fox killing an Ephrafan. The next day, Bigwig is shown the mutilated Blackavar by Campion. The Campion of this version is not very redeemable, really, in comparison to the book. Bigwig uses his owls of privilege to have Heisen Lay sent to him. Their planning for the escape is faithful to the book, except that Holly's previous promise to her is added and there is no delay. They will escape that night. The doe Nethilta, also renamed, is mentioned as joining them. Heisen Lay says the does will fight as well. This is new. There is also mention explicitly of Bigwig being a bit older. Bigwig meets Kiha with no problems. They are ready to go. As Bigwig returns, he speaks to Blackavar about the plan, but adds that he will kill him if he betrays them. Hazel and his companions take cover very near to Ephrafa. The sun is setting. They are ready. That is when Woundwater costs Bigwig to have a discussion with him. Bigwig talks of warrens he has known. He mentions the warren of the snares. He is challenged about the fox, the strange rabbits, as well as having been seen with a seagull. The initial escape attempt is over. Bigwig is in turmoil about what to do. Then he learns Nathilta has been arrested. The does are still ready and waiting. Bigwig meets Blackavar, and one wink from him to Bigwig with his mutilated eye is all it takes for Bigwig to decide to go ahead anyway, that same night. It is a wonderful moment, and a worthy addition I would submit to the Watership Down canon, simply because it adds to the character of Blackavar beautifully. Bigwig attacks the guards along with Blackavar, Heisenley and other does. It isn't just Bigwig doing the fighting. And then the thunder breaks. Well, we hear an explosion, though there doesn't seem to be any rain, which is strange. Bigwig et al. Make a run for it. And now, confusingly, we are back on Watership Down. Kiha has left them, and Clover has had five kittens. It seems this play has cut more, out more of the action than the 1978 film did. When I heard this, I was very disappointed, but all is not as it seems, for the escape from Ephrafa, including the punt, is told in flashback. First, though, the mouse Hazel rescued meets Hazel and delivers his inadvertent warning about the new rabbits. Holly and Blackover have also seen the approaching Afrofans and sound the alarm. Underground, they begin filling in the runs. And now we are with Woundwort as he recalls what happened on the river. There had been a thunderstorm at the time. The sound of rain previously at the beginning of the escape would have been a good idea, really, from a dramatic perspective. Campion's encounter with Bigwig during the escape is included. Only here Bartzia is with him, who Bigwig fatally injures at Ephrafa in the book. Here Bartzia attacks Bigwig out in the open. Having bested him, Bigwig delivers his curse to Campion. And now the rain has stopped, and Kiha harasses Woundwort in a bit of an underwhelming way compared to the film. We're at the river now. Heisen Lay asks about the boat, and then we hear that Woundwort has regrouped and reached the river using cover, as he does in the book. 
A panicking doe makes a run for it, as in the book, before being cuffed by wound walls and ending up on the punt in a panic. The other does follow her. Hazel jerks at the rope rather than biting it, and leaps onto the boat as in the film. This was the example of the film influencing this version Sean mentioned last week. Woundwalt delivers an enraged speech to them as they float away, promising he will find them, which won't be difficult, as Holly told the, him where they are from. We are now back at the siege on Warship Down. Woundwalt mentions that they are going in from the top, as in the book, and discusses having done this before with Campion at another warren, where they wiped out the whole population. He explains why they do this. Below ground, Hazel hears the digging from above and warns them all to get back. Fiver goes into a trance and talks of a dog killing rabbits. Hazel remembers the dog in the wood and has his idea after seeing Clover with her kittens, a reminder of Nuthanger Farm. He takes Dandelion with him, and curiously Blackberry, who has not appeared up to now as far as I can tell. In any case, he has no lines. Fiver is left where he is, as in the book. Bigwig takes charge and tells the others to bury him. Hazel's instructions to Blackberry receive no reply, so his silence continues. Bigwig attacks Woundwart from below and they fight. Hazel and Dandelion approach the farm. Dandelion is sceptical of Hazel's plan working, which is new. Hazel chews the rope while on top of the kennel. He sees the cat and warns Dandelion. Dandelion escapes and the dog follows, but the cat gets Hazel. On Warship Down, the fight continues. We hear squeals, but these are those of scared kittens watching this terrible sight. The fight pauses, and Woundwort tries to make an offer of pardon to Bigwig, who says his Ra has told him to stay where he is. He names Hazel, who Woundwort has not met in this version. This demoralises Woundwort, and word spreads above ground of the terrible, monstrous Hazel Ra. Then Woundwort emerges, injured from below. Woundwort says to send Vervain in to finish Big Bigwig off and then Fiverr emerges above ground to deliver his extended message of sorrow for their deaths, at the end of which he mentions the dog. And now we hear the dog approaching. There is panic. Campion tells the general he must run. And now we are with Lucy, the human farm girl at Nuthanger Farm, in the first dramatic portrayal of the chapter Dea Ex Machina. She wants to keep Hazel to replace one of her escaped hutch rabbits. After her father says he should be killed, her tears persuade him to let her ask the doctor to help when he visits. And then the dog returns. Hazel is described as rejoining the Warren some weeks later rather than on the same day. They all update him on what happened after the dog arrived on the down. After the dog, the Alil closed in. Woundwalt's body, predictably, was not found. It is now October, a long time later. An older Hazel is talking to an older dandelion about the kittens of the Warren, and then Hazel is asleep, only it isn't sleep, and meets a rabbit with starlight in his ears. This is Elachrera, and not the black rabbit. As he leaves, he hears a doe tell a story of rabbits who swam a stream and sailed down a river. It is now that Hazel leaves his body behind. And the story ends with the narrator quoting the end of the book. Next time, an alternative story of the blessing of Elachrera. <laughs>